Hi, it's Lee from Metawani chatting with Charlotte and Martin from Delane at London's Coco. So, guys, first off, thank you very much for chatting with us today. Uh, how are you both? Our pleasure. Uh, we're, we're well, yeah, we're really looking forward to tonight. London is always special. London is always special. Yesterday we did Manchester, which was really cool as well. So uh, we've been looking forward to the UK and like, I to tour a lot. Oh, fantastic. So you guys have been touring with Evergrey and Cobra and the Lotus. Um, how's the tour been thus far? Really good. We have a really good vibe and it's, it's great to have them uh, with us as special guests. And Evergrey is a fantastic band. And um, so it's an honor to have them uh, here. And also Cobra and the Lotus. Um, uh, they're, they're wonderful. Uh, they're from Canada and they they toured uh, Europe a lot and uh, yeah, so it's great to, to have them here and it's a wonderful package. Yeah, fantastic. So so far, any standout moments, any highlights, any big big things that uh, people would love to know about? Well, I, I really liked yesterday. Yesterday was a really cool show. It was one of those shows where the vibe was just really good. Like we even had some problems, but it just doesn't matter in the light of a show like that. Oh really? What what sort of problems? Just well, the light went out at one point. Yeah, the, light, <laughs> the lighting desk crashed. Then we just said, yeah. "Hey, the lighting desk desk crashed." Nick, that's her light engineer. Hey, are you okay? And then oh, so everybody knows what's going on. It's the best way to do it. Encourage yeah, a few the people to get. Was, it was in encouraging him, you know, by cheering him on. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Nothing, nothing worse than going. Oh no, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> that's great. Um, so yeah, you're touring in support of Moon Bathers, which just just come out uh, a couple of months ago, I believe. Really, really enjoyed it. It's a great, Thank great you. album. Um, so how's the reception been? Live. Great. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, normally when we release an album, we most of the time play only a couple songs because. Not all songs work as well live. Mm. Some songs are just really good on an album, but doesn't mean it works well live. And in this case, we have seven to eight songs we, we play live of a new album. We never ever did that before. And it works really well, it really blends in the set. So we're really happy it, it, it has been received really well. We also noticed that uh, even quite fast after the release, you know, people are singing along so fast, you know, uh, so. Apparently they picked it up as well, um, so the, yeah, the response is very cool as well. It must be really encouraging when you guys are stood there just going, wow, that came out so, so soon and people are still singing again. Yeah, that's great. And we hear a lot of people saying, yeah, playing it over and over again. And yeah, those are, of course, compliments which makes gives you energy. And, uh, and also seeing people enjoy it live, um, uh, looking at them singing along. That gives energy, it's special. And together, you create magic, uh, like the crowd and the band, and it's, it's, it's making it a, a, a special experience. Yeah. Any particular favorites from the album that you're playing live at the moment that are really, you really want to get out there and give it? The Hurricane and Fire With Fire. Fire With Fire is my favorite at the moment, I'm really enjoying that. That's, me too, that's yeah. on repeat. So you guys have got a strong fan base in Europe and particularly in the UK. So you briefly touched on it earlier. So what sets the UK apart? What's quite special about the UK when you come here to play? Yeah, that's the, that's uh, the question. I think. I think that we, we made. I think we made kind of a jump start here, like because we didn't release Lucidity straight away. No. Like we started here with April Rain, and then after that. Uh, Actually, we started playing here before a release whatsoever. Yes. Because we really wanted to. It's like yeah. the chicken and the egg. Like we were discouraged <laughs> yes, to go and perform here. The label said we don't want to release an album yet uh, because you also didn't play here and, and, and went vice versa. And then we said, well, then we're going to play here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh, we want to release. Yeah. And that's where it took off. Yeah. And I think that in, in a lot of the mainland, we had Lucidity, April Rain, and then quite a big pause to We Are the Others. But here we had April Rain, then Lucidity. And then we are the others because we we release them in totally different order. So maybe maybe it's also that the the attention span, you know, that there was a, a shorter period between times. We kept coming back very soon. I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but it's the only difference between UK and mainland that in the way that we release our albums. That I, I think yeah. it's also a cultural thing. Yeah. I, I I suspect uh, like the UK isn't Europe. It's not the continent, and it's. Like in, in the US, it's different as well. Uh, it's just a different country. Can you notice, we get invited here to like rock and metal radio stations. You don't, you don't even have that in, in the Netherlands. That's also something like, I think that the culture for, for a lot of music here is more 
more accepted. More accepted. And in well. Europe, it's more a niche thing. Yeah. 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 So, uh, which is not. We have a wonderful fan base in Europe. Paris right. is always crazy. Germany <laughs> goes really well, yeah. but it's it's different. Yeah. yeah. Great. And so you're a third of the way through doing your tour at the moment, and you really recently announced that Liv Christine was going to be performing at a guest guest appearance. Are there any more? Any more in the works that you can we announced, tell us about? Um, yeah, we announced Alyssa from yeah. Arch Enemy, so White Blood, and uh, we announced uh, Bert and Sibel from Fear Factory. Wow, um, fantastic. So uh, next week is a new announcement. So, uh, yeah. But we thought it was important to first sell out the show yeah. because it's about delaying and we want and we want to have of course those guests because they're part of the release there were a guest but it's it shouldn't be the other way around if you know yeah. what I mean. And um, yeah I think that's that's wonderful. It's kind of kind of the icing on the cake. Yeah. Birthday. Yes. <laughs> yes to ten ten years, congratulations. Thank you very much. So obviously fans go mad when you guys hit the stage so when you go to a new city do you do you hope for a warm reception or do you no, we hope that people just stand there and go <laughs> 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 or do you just get on stage do what you do best and go from there i do think that like we've been going to dublin for the first time on this tour that was really a place where you know you, you don't really know what to expect because it's the first time i've been played in ireland and it's a bit different because you, you, you don't know the vibe of the audience yet. Mm. Yet still, even when we play there, front row is all people that we know because they travel around and, and, and they come to see them. So I guess the fact that we always have, and this is an absolute luxury and privilege, but the fact that we always have those kind of familiar faith for me that's an anchor when we go on stage. We, we've got our travel crowd with us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that must be quite encouraging, that's stepping out and going, oh, very new city, I know you. I know you, I know you, and it's, that's, that's And also for venues, you know, it's like a guarantee of a uh, crowd you get. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's uh, yeah, their support is wonderful, a special. Yeah. Yeah. You get them from all over Europe and sometimes also from outside the continent, from America. Wow. Yes, they met a guy from Missouri. Uh, um, there are people from Brazil. Uh, from France, from the Netherlands, in Dublin, I remember. Yeah. So it's very international. Yeah. It must be so encouraging just having people coming from all over just to even to countries that are their home. We're spoiled. <laughs> so yeah. So let's let's talk about the new album, Moon Babies. So what was your inspiration behind it? What was what drove you writing it? I think lyrically for the first couple of songs, uh, they were all pretty pessimistic and they were all pretty, pretty, pretty dark and sad. And that was a bit of a, 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 a difficult point because I always told myself like whenever you write about that kind of stuff, there needs to be uh, a light and there wasn't. But at that point, we needed to decide, okay, we're going to do artwork now, we're going to do photo shoots now, what's it going to be? When it and comes together then. Yeah, exactly. And and uh, and um, so we, d we decided to go for it and also put, put the label of Moonbathers on it to actually say, you know, hey, even in that dark place, you know, there's always, there, is, there can also be that kind of comfort in the dark. And actually, you can especially find it in the dark somewhere when it comes to... I always like to listen to sad songs when I'm feeling sad and it makes me feel better, you know. So I hope that is something that, that uh, fans can relate to. And eventually, there are a lot of really upbeat points on the album as well to kind of counterbalance that song. Yeah, yeah. This, we also really aim for having a lot of contrast. I'm always talking about contrast with, uh, with the albums, but this time I really pull it off. Um, Greatly, and uh, because there are really hard, heavy songs in there, there are really sensitive ballad disc songs in there. Uh, there's like a, a rock song, like Fire with Fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but still, it's cohesive enough, and um, uh, so I'm really, really happy how how it turned out, and uh, that's what we aim for is what we got. Yeah. yeah, it's good to have that balance within the album, to to have all that contrast, so everything's. It's not all, you know, one track. Sometimes I find if when listening to, for instance, like a, a death metal album, 
it's just relentless and then you come away from that just physically exhausted so having something yeah then you have to be in the mood for it you know yeah. but then there's nothing wrong with that but it's like our mood thing absolutely in, in this case it's it's for us it's about diversity and uh, we want to have diversity on the album and as I said contrast and I do think that this is probably the most diverse album yeah. that we've made Mm. I agree, I agree, and you never know, although you aim for things, you never know how it turns out, because uh, things, you know, creative juices, creative processes, it's just what comes, comes, uh, but you can of course aim for something, if it works out like that, it's, that's also, that you don't know, but that's also the exciting part of it, and, uh, uh, you can only aim production-wise, uh, so we did, we did uh, some new things, experimenting in a way of recording, not recording in one go, but in different parts. Um, so uh, mixing a couple of albums, then start over recording another uh, a couple of songs, then start over recording another couple of songs. Uh, it's more a modern approach, like you see with dance too. You, you mm. write a song, mix it, and release it, go to the next. Well, in our case, you don't release it, but that's how we, we mix it, go to the next. And then you can reflect on it later on, and you can say, yeah, this turned out well, or it doesn't, or perhaps you can tweak it. And it's a different way now of working, and it worked out, worked out really well. I think we should, we're going to elaborate on that next time. Oh, great. I was going to touch upon that a little bit further, but... <laughs> 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 already. No, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, so, Charlotte, you were mentioning earlier that some of the songs were quite dark. Uh, yeah. Death seems to be a, a little bit of a theme. Was that... A, quite a conscious decision or was it something a little bit more or did it just manifest itself? It, it just manifested itself and also the fact is that there are at least three songs on there with explicitly the topic of death as the main theme. Still there are all three from a very different perspective and from a very different story like Turn the Lights Out mm. is actually a song from the perspective of death in Neil Gaiman's comic series The Sandman because that was always one of my favorite fictional representations of death ever. Oh. It was not dark and gloomy but like a young empath uh, empathetic girl and it was it was wonderful. Um, and then Pendulum was well literally because of a relative dying. And that's Sorry to hear that. that that was that was just two very different things. At one point you're just having fun with a comic character and then the next one you kind of encounter it close from by. from close by and even though they both have the same topic they're very different mm. in, in in what they're about um, so and 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 there's a couple more there's one based on the on the movie script uh, basically about a girl defying death you know not tonight and uh, that's dance macabre and so even though it, it is it is really uh, a topic could have called the album Death, but that would <laughs> probably give people <laughs> the wrong impression about it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Delaney gone really dark. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's you know where the where the the light has to has to come in mm. and everything. So um, your yeah, you're, you're right in the in the in the observation of that. Yeah. Well your explanation of Moon Bay as being the lights in the dark I that was very very nice um, your symphonic elements obviously you guys love adding that's your music how how do you find recreating that live um, you're limited of course because if you want to recreate it every single string violin um, then uh, we need an uh, orchestra uh, uh, 80 piece orchestra here or something and people will have to pay five thousand pounds to uh, yeah, to cover everything. So, so there's no plans. <laughs> uh, no, but I think um, uh, it's also uh, the guitar part, the bass part, the heaviness, the bombastic part is so important that it's not all about the symphonic uh, part. It's part of it, but it's it's by far not not everything. And there are also like strings, and we also have got like like I mean synth 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 stuff, and also got like. Uh, electronic elements in there as well, um, and, um, and and that's very easily done live. So of course you've got stuff uh, playing along, because otherwise it's just not possible. But um, uh, I think we got a really good balance, and it's also very important having a very good light li uh, sound engineer. And I think we got the best sound engineer. It, it, it just works really well live. 
And I also think already in the songwriting process, uh, I think that one of your main strengths in the arranging is that the the symphonic orchestra is never just there like, oh, let's put them in here because we want to be, you know, no. there's always, Not they're there function. when the song asks for it. They're always, they're always functional. And there is always a very good balance between those elements and, you know, the guitars and bass and the, and the rhythm world. So sometimes when people come to our show, they say, you know, uh, oh, Delane's a lot heavier life than I would have expected because then it tips a little bit to that balance. But it's never leaning on it too no. much. No, also not all songs have uh, symphonic uh, elements. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it differs per song. And um, so I think there's a really good balance. But don't get me wrong, I love symphonic um, elements in, in, our s in our songs. It, it, it makes it grand and very rich in what's happening. But you have to be careful with it as well. Mm. Yeah. Right, we're almost out of time, so um, obviously 10 years, congratulations once again. Um, so how does it feel and are there, what future plans have you got for the next decade? <laughs> well, first of all, we got the anniversary show and DVD coming up. Yes, uh, with your pledge music. The 10th of December, so we're very excited about that. We're still planning for that. And well, after that, we've, we've been planning all through 2017. Yeah, so of course, <laughs> in 2017, we are going to release the DVD. Uh, we're going to do uh, uh, touring, we're going to, to tour the US and Canada for example together with Hammerfall, the package and um, uh, it's our first headline tour, uh, there's, that's a big step um, and uh, uh, we're going to do festivals, uh, we're starting writing our new album, we're, we're already in our minds already working on that, um, so uh, we're not bored at all. Uh, but this year has been crazy, a lot of work, so I would like to gear down just a tiny bit. <laughs> I just need a break. <laughs> right, well guys, thank you so much for speaking with us today, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, so, Thanks. one final thing, would you like to say anything at all to Matawani readers, listeners, all across the globe? Yeah, thanks for the interest. Uh, thanks for checking out the interview, uh, checking out what we do in general. Uh, we're very thankful for the people who support us and come to the show and listen to the music. It's the reason that we can do what we do. Exactly. So, yeah. I can only concur to that. Yeah. Great. Well, again, guys, thank you so much and good luck for tonight. Thank, thank you so you. much.